Guys, he's going to shoot you or he's going to shoot me. That is not what you'd want to hear on a job. But for most police officers, this is nothing new. A normal day for these guys can go from issuing a traffic ticket to a highway speed chase and gun battle within minutes. If this sounds crazy, then you're in for a thrill because in this video, I will show you some of the craziest police shootings ever recorded. Sean Reed. On May 6th, Dress John Reed, who also goes by the name Sean Reed, was shot 15 times. But what's crazy is that the 21-year-old streamed the last minutes leading to his death live on Facebook. In a video that went viral after his death, Sean can be seen talking to his followers on the social media platform while he was being chased by the police. Details of what led to the chase only became apparent after Sean was killed. The video shows Sean, who was shirtless, driving, and having a casual conversation with his audience, and also singing along to the music that was being played in the car. Sean then glances at the rearview mirror, and the next thing he says is, I am not pulling over. Over, he then laughs and tries to show his audience what was behind him. Although it is difficult to make out from the video, Sean was being tailed by the police after he had allegedly driven recklessly at an intersection. A few minutes later, a chase was on and Sean appeared to be excited. He kept saying, Oh yeah, you are not going to catch me. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm not going to jail today. At this point, one of his viewers, who also happened to be the one recording the live stream, joked about Sean being sent to prison. Stoked by the chase, Sean decided to ditch his car and attempt to evade the cops on foot. It was all fun and games, and a lot of his viewers were laughing and cracking jokes. But everything changed once Sean stepped out of the car. It all happened so fast. First, the police can be heard screaming, Down! Down! And Sean replied with a derogatory remark while still running away from them. Suddenly the video went still for a moment, and then several gunshots erupted. Sean Reed died shortly after. His death stirred up a protest, especially after one police officer was recorded on camera joking about it. The officer was promptly suspended and later reassigned to a different unit while a grand jury dropped all criminal charges against the officer who had shot at Sean. The decision was taken after an investigation revealed that Sean Reed was armed and took two shots at the officer before he was shot at and that the gun recovered from him matched the one used in two previous drive-by shootings. However, the family's lawyer argues that Sean had no weapon on him while he was running away from the police. Rebuffing the allegation that Sean had fired at the police, the lawyer said that Sean, who had served in the Air Force for a few months before being discharged, was a trained soldier. If he had shot at him, he would have gotten him. To the 5,000 plus viewers who witnessed the last moments of Sean Reed, it was an intense moment of mixed emotions. Some were in doubt, some were shocked, and others were in disbelief. Leaf. The Kehoe Brothers Chevy and Cheney, popularly known as the Kehoe brothers, were involved in a shootout with three police officers on two different occasions on the same day. The brothers were believed to be members of a white supremacist gang, and Chevy was wanted for the murder of an arms dealer, William Muller, his wife Nancy, and their eight-year-old daughter in January 1996. On February 15, 1997, barely a year after he had killed the Mullers, Chevy was driving a blue suburban van with an expired license plate number when a highway patrol trooper pulled him over. This was already a red flag, but there was more. During their interaction, Chevy told the officer he didn't have any license on him. By this time, another police officer, Deputy Gates, was heading to the scene, and he made it just in time to see Chevy refuse a pat-down by the trooper. Yes, sir, I don't want no problem. I'm not going to give you any problems, sir. Still violate. I'm not violating you, sir. When the officer insisted on patting him down, Chevy suddenly bolted back to the van in an attempt to run away from the officers. The two officers chased after him, but as they got to the van, the other Kehoe brother, Cheney, who had been quietly watching from the van, fired a gun at the officers through the window. The officers reacted to the new threat by pulling their weapons as they forget about Chevy for a while and focused on his brother. Immediately after taking a shot at the officers, Cheney stepped out of the van just as Deputy Gates made his way around the back of the van to the passenger side. The two men shot at each other, and with nothing between them, it was a miracle that nobody was hit. The deputy pulled back behind the patrol vehicle for cover and kept shooting at Cheney. With all the attention on his brother, Chevy quickly jumped into the van and made a run for it, while Cheney ran into a nearby bush with a hail of bullets trailing him behind. It ended just as quickly as it had started. The Kehoe brothers had fled the scene, leaving behind shell casings a token of the violent exchange that had just taken place. The officers returned to the crime scene after a brief chase on foot, and just as they were checking up on each other to ensure that no one had been hit, they heard another gunfire close by. A patrol officer had seen the blue suburban van, and when he got close, Chevy pulled out an automatic rifle and fired at the officer. The officer wasn't hit, all thanks to Cheney's poor aim. After shooting more than 30 rounds at the officer, Chevy ditched his gun and ran away from the scene. The brothers were never found until four months later when Cheney turned himself in and also gave up his brother Chevy. Both men were sent to jail. Chevy was given three life sentences, while Cheney, who had cooperated with authorities, received 28 years in prison. Bradley Olson
Adrenaline-pumping high-speed chases are great for a Hollywood action scene. In the real world, it is a life-threatening situation, and to protect the public, men of the police force have to put their own lives on the line, sometimes more than once. Before he was finally killed in a shootout, Olsen had been involved in high-speed chases and was even convicted on three occasions. Each time, he somehow managed to wriggle his way out of police custody. But after having his way more than once, it seemed Olsen was becoming more brazen. On November 14, 2020, Olsen fled after he was stopped by a police officer for driving recklessly. This time around was different. First, he had a female passenger with him, and then he had a gun and was not afraid to use it. So when the police officer started chasing him, Olsen fired a shot at the officer through the rear window, but he missed. A few moments later, other police officers joined in on the chase. Things were heating up quickly, and when Olsen's female passenger called 911 to report that he was threatening to shoot her, the situation became a lot more complex. Chasing Olsen meant putting the life of his passenger at risk, and at the same time, she was not safe from Olsen, who was already out of control. Soon, Olsen crashed at an inter section, and with nowhere left to run, he became even more violent, firing several rounds at the officers, who were also returning fire after they had taken cover behind their vehicles, a few feet away from where Olsen had crashed. Police body cam video shows the moment a rookie cop arrived at the scene saying, he's shooting, he's shooting, seconds before gunshots can be heard. The standoff dragged on for a while, until an armored vehicle arrived, and the police were finally able to get closer to Olsen and arrest him. Olsen was charged to court, and later released after posting bail. This was a grave error because Olsen was a flight risk and had a reputation for evading the police, was arrested with drugs, and even shot at the police. Somehow, all of these seemed to be overlooked. As expected, Olsen never appeared in court on the day he was scheduled to. It didn't take long before Olsen reappeared on the police radar. This time, he was even more brazen. This happened on Sunday, April 21st, 2021. Olsen had been spotted by the police, and he immediately bolted, knowing that he was a wanted man. This led to another high-speed chase during which Olsen kept firing at the police who were hot behind his heels. What he did next was as crazy as it could get. In the middle of the chase, Olsen decided to switch cars, so he jumped out of the car he was driving, ran to the road, and attempted a carjacking. It was then the officers who were in pursuit opened fire at him. Olsen was critically wounded and later pronounced dead in the hospital. Dayon Ledet. September 20th, 2021. Police officers from the Houston Police Department visited 30-year-old Dayon Ledet, who had a long rap sheet of offenses, including evading arrest and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. But what brought the officers of the Major Offenders Division to House 5? 5,350 Era Park Drive on this particular day was to serve Ledette an arrest warrant after he failed to turn up in court for drug-related charges. At about 7.30 a.m., the officers knocked on the door of the apartment where Ledette lived, and a woman opened the door. She was immediately asked to step out of the house while the officers kept calling out for Ledette. By now, the body cam was already rolling, and the officers can be seen talking to a woman. One of the officers asked the woman if there was a gun in the house, and just then, several gunshots can be heard. Two police officers were in instantly hit, and they fell to the floor. Senior police officer William Bill Jeffrey took a direct hit and fell on his back while Sergeant Vance tried to crawl away from the hail of bullets. The other officers immediately took cover and returned fire. Although their target was not visible in the video, you can see the officers shooting at the building while calling out to their colleague who had been hit, but there was nowhere any of them could help their wounded colleague, not while Ledette was raining down curses and bullets. They had to somehow put Ledette down. The shooting continued for a while before one of the officers shouted, He's down! He's down, but I can't see him! The officer fired a few more rounds before they cautiously approached the house to help their colleagues. Both officers who were hit were taken to the hospital. Unfortunately, Bill Jeffrey, who had taken a direct hit, didn't survive. Ledette was also killed in the shootout, and the police recovered a handgun that was rigged with an illegal device known as a Glock switch. This is a small mechanical device that completely transforms a handgun into a semi-automatic. This explains how Ledette was able to fire several rounds at the beginning of the video, and also how he was able to keep up with the police officers who held actual rifles. The incident strikes fear both within the law enforcement community and the citizens. According to the police, there is absolutely no reason or no room for our suspects to be armed like this. This is a threat that is here, and it's a threat to everybody, law enforcement and citizens in every neighborhood in our community. Paul Palafox on March 28, 2023, police officers from the San Antonio Police Department showed up at the residence of Paul Palafox. What they didn't know was that Paul was fully geared up and ready for a fight. The four police officers who responded to the call were taken by surprise when 34-year-old Paul Palafox opened fire at them with an AR-15 rifle as one of the officers was trying to make contact with him. Here is what led to the shootout. Palafox was in a heated argument with a 66-year-old who had promised to give him some money but failed to keep his promise. Although there 
there isn't much detail on the argument. What happened next was that Palafox shot the man in the leg before driving home in a black Range Rover. Police had initially responded to the shooting, which took place at a car wash, and then they were led to Palafox's house by the man who got shot in the leg. The body cam shows when the officer arrived at 1306 Mesquite Street. The officer tried talking to Palafox. Officer, what's up? I don't know why you are waving your finger at me. Palafox's response was not audible enough, but shortly after, his intention became clear. The officer noticed Palafox reaching for his weapon and immediately responded by drawing his handgun and warning Palafox not to reach out for his weapon. You don't reach for anything, dude. Hey, don't reach for anything, bro. Don't reach for anything. Don't you do it. Don't do it. Palafox did not respond to any of these orders, nor did he intend to, because just when the office asked to see his hands, the officers were not prepared for the heated gun battle that came after. Wedged between two cars, Palafox had an AR rifle and all the advantages. So when he started shooting at the police officers who were armed with handguns, all four officers took cover. It was then they realized he was armed with an AR-15. One of the officers kept shouting to the others, he's got an AR, he's got an AR, as he ran away from the hail of bullets. It was a one-sided shootout, as Palafox shot over 26 rounds the police officers barely allowing them to return fire, but what the cops lacked in brute force, they made up for with strategy. The police officers found a weak spot in Palafox's makeshift cover and took a single shot, which critically wounded the shooter. Palafox was rushed to the hospital in critical condition and later pronounced dead at about 6.20 a.m. the next day. No officer or bystander was hurt in the shooting, despite the barrage of bullets. Kenneth Hearn. After a 70-year-old woman was sexually assaulted in her home by a man with a gun, the police began an investigation into the incident. The suspect had entered the apartment through an open patio door and was caught on camera. The Scottsdale Police Department notified the public of the incident and requested their help in identifying the suspect. According to the notice released by the police, the incident took place on October 12, 2022. The information gathered by the police pointed to one man, 37-year-old Kenneth Hearn, making him the prime suspect in the investigation. With that, a search warrant was issued. The search warrant permitted the collection of DNA, forensic evidence, and digital evidence since Hearn was the lead suspect in the investigation investigation of the assault. Also, Hearn had an outstanding arrest warrant for failing to appear in court for a DUI offense, which was not related to the present investigation. According to the police, Hearn knew he was wanted and avoided them for as long as possible. All attempts to contact him failed, and so when they got information on Hearn's location, the SDP decided to take action immediately. January 6, 2023, officers from the Special Assignment Unit of the SPD gathered on the second floor of the apartment where Hearn was believed to be hiding. One of the officers knocked on the door and announced announced that they had a search warrant. A woman answered the door and was asked to step out of the apartment together with the child who was with her. After the woman and the child were safely removed, the police announced their presence again and asked Hearn to come to the front door. A man believed to be Hearn can be heard talking to the officers, who insisted that he should come out with his hands up. It was a tense situation and one slight move could prove to be fatal. Hearn was hiding and the police decided to use a drone to know exactly where he was. Immediately, the drone was launched inside the room. Hearn, who was probably on edge at this time, opened fire at the police. The bullets tore through the wall, hitting one of the police officers outside the apartment. The officers shot back at Hearn, and in a flash, it was all over. Hearn had managed to escape, but he wasn't gone for long. The next day, Hearn was spotted at a parking complex by Phoenix police officers. This would be his second encounter with the police in two days, and just like the previous day, Hearn did not comply with the orders that were given. The police officers on the scene first fired non-lethal rounds, and when Hearn tried to pull a gun, that was when the officers fired lethal shots at him. In the video, Hearn can be seen running away from the police second before he was shot. Morris Richard Jones III. In a sad and depraved twist of events, a man lured a police officer to his house, and just as the officer got close enough, the man revealed a handgun he was hiding and fired several shots at the officer at close range. This happened on February 11, 2022, at about 2 a.m. Police officers received a 911 call that a woman was shot. The first officer who responded to the call can be seen running toward the house where the woman was allegedly shot. A man stood by the doorway, beckoning the officer to hurry up because the woman was dying. The unknown man and told the officer, she is choking on her own blood, come on bro, come on. The officer rushed towards the man, but unknown to him, he was heading right into a trap. When he got close enough, the officer asked if there was anyone else at home, and the man replied, just me, before suddenly revealing the gun he was hiding and firing at the officer. The wounded officer, caught completely by surprise, was unable to return fire, so he retreated immediately and called for help. In the video, the officer can be heard calling 999 and saying he has been shot. The 26 seconds video was just the beginning of what will be a very 
very long night for the officers of the Phoenix Police Department. More police officers arrived at the scene, but by this time, the shooter had barricaded himself inside the building. Soon the door opened, and a man holding a baby wrapped in a blanket came out of the house. Following orders from the police officers, the man laid the baby on the floor before walking towards the officers with his hands raised. Once the man was detained, some of the officers rushed in to pick up the baby, and as if on cue, the gunman opened fire at the officers. When the shooting was over, a total of nine police officers were harmed. Five were shot at, including the first officer who had responded to the 911 call, and four other officers were hit by shrapnels and ricochets from the shooting. The shooter, 36-year-old Morris Jones III, committed suicide after the standoff with the police that lasted for several hours. His body was found in the house along with his girlfriend, 29-year-old Shatifa Lobley, who had also been shot. According to the police, this was all the result of a domestic dispute. However, the saddest part is the violent aggression toward police officers who are simply trying to do their job. In his address, police chief Jerry Williams said, this is just one more example of the dangers that officers face every day keeping us and our community safe. If I seem upset, I am. This is senseless. It does not need to happen, and it continues to happen over and over again. Jonathan Magana. Three officers were injured in a shooting that ended with the death of the suspect, 32-year-old Jonathan Magana. The suspect had barricaded himself inside an uncompleted building when the officers arrived, and the cam video released by the Los Angeles Police Department shows the exact time the suspect fired several shots at the police officers who were trying to make contact. Before the incident, Magana was sentenced to five years in prison for robbery, but got out after just two years for good conduct. On March 8, 2023, barely one year after his release, Magana was already on the police radar again. Although it is not clear why the police were looking for Magana, one thing is certain, he wasn't going down without a fight. After the LAPD located his hideout, they called in the K-9 unit to help apprehend him, but things got out of hand quickly. The officers on the scene tried to make contact with Magana, warning him in both English and Spanish. But despite being warned, Magana refused to comply and surrender himself peacefully. That was when the officers decided to use more aggressive measures with the hope of forcing Magana out of the building. But when a chemical agent was deployed in the building, Magana responded by shooting at the officers who, by this time, were inside the building. The officers shot back while exiting the building. The moment was captured by the body cam worn by the officers. After the shooting ended, an officer can be heard saying, get me out, hurry up, get me out, I am hit. According to the police, three officers had been hit during the shooting. Two of them were able to exit the building, but one couldn't. The remaining officers called out to their injured colleague in an attempt to locate where he was before they re-entered the building and pulled him out. After all the officers were accounted for, the SWAT division was notified. When the SWAT team arrived, they also attempted to make contact with Magana, and just like before, there was no response. The SWAT team then deployed a robotic device with a camera to scan the room. That was when the officers realized why Magana was not responding. He had been hit multiple times and was immobilized. Magana was taken into custody and later pronounced dead on the scene despite medical intervention. James Harrison 52-year-old James Harrison was shot and killed by police after leading them on a speed chase. Harrison was wanted by the police after his neighbor Thomas May caught him peeping at his 15-year-old daughter through her bedroom window. According to the police, May heard banging noises outside the window, and when he raised the window blinds, he saw Harrison with a ladder, who, after being caught, allegedly ran to his house, which was just a short distance away. By the time the police arrived, Harrison was not at home, and the police didn't find any sign of forced entry or the ladder which Harrison allegedly used to access the window, but Thomas May was not taking any chances, so he decided to file a restraining order to stop Harrison from trespassing on his property. But when the police could not contact Harrison, they left to return the next morning. On the morning of May 24th at about 7.30, residents of the neighborhood woke to news of a double homicide involving 83-year-old Janet Harrison and Thomas May. Both victims died from a fatal gunshot wound to the head, while May's daughter was found lying on the front lawn. She too had been shot, but was still alive. The police officer who found the victims was initially only following up on the incident that happened the night before and was there to issue Harrison the trespass notice. But just as he was driving into the neighborhood, the officer spotted Harrison leaving in a dark blue car. According to the police, Harrison made a hand gesture consistent with shooting a firearm. The officer was about to turn around when he noticed May's daughter lying on the lawn, so he stopped to give her aid. Other officers arrived at the scene responding to a 911 call. At about the same time, the first officer had spotted May's daughter. That was when they discovered the bodies of the two other victims, one of whom of Harrison's mother. Police officers were on the lookout for Harrison, who they believed had committed the homicide after he was identified by May's daughter. After several hours, Harrison was seen hiding in a cemetery. Body cam video shows police officers chasing Harrison
Harrison around several neighborhoods until he eventually crashed his car into a rock. The officers quickly surrounded Harrison, and the standoff lasted for a few minutes, during which time the officers ordered Harrison to stand down. However, Harrison did not comply, and according to police, he pointed a weapon at the officers, and that was when they shot at him. It is not clear which officer delivered the fatal shot, but the video clearly shows that multiple shots were fired by several officers at once. Harrison didn't survive. Brian Simonton. He just kind of showed up unannounced, and I know he has like hit rock bottom. I feel bad for him, but I cannot have him here. At about 3.26 p.m., police officers in Ogden, Utah, received a 911 call from a woman who said her ex-husband, 37-year-old Brian Simonton, had violated his restraining order. But the real problem was that, according to her, Simonton was acting strange, as if he wants to kill himself or wanting to be killed. She also mentioned that Simonton was homeless and had brought his dog to her house. The dog was sick, and Simonton insisted that she should take the dog with her. Police received a second 911 call from another resident of the apartment, saying that Simonton is known to have guns and has refused to leave even after being told to do so. While the police tried to get as much information as they could from the callers, one thing was certain. Simonton was on edge, and this could go very bad, very quickly. The first police officer to arrive at the Washington Park apartment complex, where the calls had come from, immediately spotted Simonton in the parking lot with a handgun. The body cam video shows the exact moment the officer arrived and quickly pulled back after observing observing that Simonton had a weapon. A few seconds later, the officer ordered Simonton to drop his weapon, but he refused and instead pointed the weapon at the officer, who immediately took cover. The officer then reports this on his radio before cautiously advancing towards Simonton while giving his location to the other police officers who had arrived at the scene. As the cops gradually surrounded him, Simonton must have felt cornered, and that was when the fireworks began. Simonton shot at the cops, who in turn shot back at him while taking cover. One of the officers was hit during the shootout and can be heard calling out to his colleagues. Some officers rushed to help their wounded colleague, while others continued shooting at Simonton. After what must have felt like an eternity, Simonton was down, but since he was still close to his gun, the police officers decided to take extra precautions and sent in a canine dog to haul Simonton's body away from the gun before they approached him. Simonton had taken several hits, so despite attempts by medical personnel to help him, he succumbed to his injuries and died. Jeffrey Clough Garvin on August 1, 2019, the police responded to a 911 involving 43-year-old Jeffrey Clough Garvin. Before that day, Jeffrey had no criminal record, and although he and his wife had issues, it was nothing out of the ordinary that would escalate to the point where he threatened to harm her. At least, this is what Paula thought of her friend's relationship. In her words, they looked like they were a very loving family, but looks can be deceiving, and from all indications, things had taken a new turn. Perhaps it was losing his job or the money issues, but no one knows for sure. By the time the police arrived, Jeffrey had swallowed some pills and had a gun by his side. The police officers met his wife, who was distressed by the situation. This moment was captured by the body cam worn by the officers. The video shows Jeffrey's wife explaining the situation to the police before giving them directions to the room where Jeffrey was. According to his wife, Jeffrey was in bed talking to his dad on the phone and he had a shotgun beside him. One of the officers then proceeded to pat down Jeffrey's wife before asking her to step aside. Knowing that Jeffrey had a gun, the officers pulled out their handguns before going into the house. What they didn't know is that Jeffrey was not in the bedroom. While they had been talking to his wife, Jeffrey had stepped downstairs. So the moment the officers entered the house, the lead officer spotted Jeffrey and immediately asked him to drop the gun. Jeffrey briefly replied to the officers, and although it is not clear what he said, what happened clearly shows that Jeffrey did not comply. Gunshots exploded rapidly as both parties fired at each other. Jeffrey can be heard screaming to the officers, hey, kill me, kill me, and then another round of gunshots erupted. One of the officers was hit twice on the arm, and when that happened, both officers retreated and called for help. A while later, Jeffrey was found dead in the house, and although he had several gunshot wounds inflicted by the officers, none of it was lethal, according to the police. The autopsy suggests that Jeffrey might have taken his own life by shooting himself in the chest with his shotgun. To the police officers involved in these shootings, this was just another day on the job. If you liked this video, click the card on your screen to see other videos like this.